Hello, my name is Jacqueline Liss, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Directed Reading Thinking Activity, also known as DRTA. This strategy was developed by Russell Stauffer in 1969. This strategy can be used for all children, but especially ELLs. It's a strategy that breaks the book into parts and allows the students to think before they read, think while they read, and think after they read. It has the students make predictions about what they think the book is going to be about based on the title, the pictures, and also breaks the book up into sections if there are chapters or subheadings. And the teacher can ask questions about their predictions based on those subheadings, chapter titles, pictures, etc. For students that are struggling readers or for students that are ELLs, this allows them a chance to think about what the story might be about and can aid in their comprehension if they are having problems. It can be used in an individual setting, a small group setting, or whole group setting. Personally, I would use this in a small group setting so that children are able to share their ideas, students can hear other students' predictions, and it can allow the teacher to work with each student individually if needed and can listen to the, all the students' predictions and help where needed. If it was used in a whole group setting, the students might be able to pair off and do a think, pair, share kind of scenario, but I think this would be best used in a small group setting or individually if you're doing this as an assessment. The basis of this strategy is this, the teacher is going to pick a selected text based off of the student's reading level and grade level or ELL level it used across all levels and all capabilities. You can just pick a different book if they're on a lower level or a more challenging book if they're on a higher level. That's why this is great in small groups because you can get the kids together based on their levels. So the student or the teacher, it picks a book and reads the book and divides it up into sections. And the sections are made based on predictions. So the student is going to predict what the story is going to be about based on the title. Then they are going to read the first section that was pre-selected by the teacher. And once they're at the end of that section, the student is going to write a statement that says whether their um, prediction was correct or incorrect and why. And they're going to find proof or evidence in the section they had read that shows why this is. Then they're gonna make a prediction based on the next section, what they think might happen next based on what they've already read or what the pictures are in the next section, et cetera. Then they're gonna read that section to try and find proof to confirm or negate their prediction. This gives the student a purpose for reading this book. Their purpose is to find that evidence. So they're reading this looking for a particular statement that can prove or negate their prediction. This way they're reading for a purpose, they're not just reading to read, they're actually paying attention and trying to find that statement. In each section, the teacher is going to stop the reading and they're gonna ask questions to prompt the thinking, encourage them to keep looking. Then at the end of the book, what happened, share their predictions, uh, talk about what they thought about the story, and really enhance the comprehension because of discussion, talking about it always helps. So for an example, I have the book Pumpkin Jack. So this, the teacher would hold this book up, have the students look at the title, look at the pictures, and discuss what they think might be the theme of the story. You want, you want to um, relate this to prior knowledge, activate their schema, because every child has probably seen a pumpkin before. They know what they are. They participated in Halloween maybe. So you're gonna ask them what this is, what they think the story might be about, why is there carvings in the pumpkin? Have they ever carved a pumpkin? Anything that would update their schema. Then they're gonna talk about what the story is going to be about, and then you read. So since this book isn't divided into chapters or sections, you're just gonna read the book and stop and talk about what you think, what's happening. So I would show this page and this picture ask them what they think is happening what is the child doing to the pumpkin have they ever carved a pumpkin and they keep reading another way you could do this is to go through the book previously and look at all the pictures pumpkin jack has great pictures so that'd be a great book to do this with and they can predict the storyline based on the pictures they're looking at they that way they're going through the book already thinking what the next picture is going to be and that can help with their predictions. Um, a couple resources that I found that have great information on this strategy. 
Our teacherscreated.com has some great information on this. Um, readingrockets.org has a video that you can look at that shows um, the DRTA in action, which I found very helpful. And also the National Education Association has a lot of information on this and a couple videos. Also, if you go on YouTube and type it in, you can find a lot of information on this. I watched tons of videos that really helped me. You can see it done in all different settings and grade levels. Um, this strategy is perfect for ELLs because they can read silently to themselves during the process or they, you can have the children whisper read. So you can listen to them as they read and get an, a kind of gauge how they're doing. And then it also lets them talk to their peers and hear their peers' predictions. And they can gauge their learning off of that, which is always helpful when you can listen to native speakers. So you want to mix up your groups a little if you're going to be doing small groups. So that is the directed reading thinking activity. I hope you learned something. <laughs>